Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today's video we will be talking about the biggest MTH locomotive ever produced. The MTH Premier Union Pacific Coal Turbine. So as mentioned in my video dated 12-26-2020, this model was originally PS1. Now it is PS3 and we will talk about it more in this video. I will not review this product as Eric Siegel has done a review and I don't see the point of doing a review of this model if there has been another one and several others on YouTube of this model already. So we'll stick to just talking about what this model and what's unique about this particular model compared to the PS3 models. The first thing is that this model has a slave board setup. So the new PS3 models have no slave board, meaning that you would have to lash them up similar to the Alco F units and E units that MTH has produced in the PS3 model for their Premier line. As you guys can tell, there is a wire that feeds between the B unit to the A unit. And this model did require two PS3 kits. So what had happened was there's one PS3 kit in the A unit, there's one PS3 kit in the B unit. However, there is a slave board that is from the Amtrak, Penn Central, Canadian National, VA Rail, turbo trains that MTH has produced in the past. And this slave board is inserted into the B unit. So essentially, this is similar to a PS2 setup, but it's a PS3 model. So my installer installed two kits and one slave board for this particular model. So the reason why for this setup was lash-ups are sometimes inoperable. So there are days that, like a sports team or an athlete, they have good days and bad days. Some days I have good luck with lashing up, some days I don't. And if you do it this way with two kits and a slave board, you don't have to worry about making a lash up or if it decides to break halfway through your run, you don't have the A unit and B unit doing opposites of what they're supposed to do. The other difference is that this has a different chain file. So there's no chain file compatible for this locomotive to be set up in any way. As mentioned, the PS3 run that came out late last year has no chain file. The chain file is used for talking to all the motors for the slave boards. So the only way that this model could run was that they would take the chain file off the Randa turbine because there are four motors and this model has four motors, two in the A, two in the B unit, in order for the master slave board to function correctly. So if anyone wants theirs done like mine, expect to pay $630 or a little bit more to get it upgraded. I'm happy about how mine turned out and I look forward to running it every time I pull it out of the box. Now you're probably saying, well why didn't I buy the PS3 model? And as I mentioned earlier, lash-ups Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. However, I believe that this setup is a little bit better and more, how would I say it, aesthetic to what MTH has done in the past. I really miss that they're wired harnesses because everything just flows together. And even though the wired harness does not look right and it doesn't look prototypical, considering that the coupling units between the B unit and the A unit and the tender is not prototypical. I still think that the wired setup is a little bit more better than having to do two separate units to lash them up together. So as we continue on through the year, it's getting really hard to find good MTH repairmen and to find an MTH repairman in certain parts of the country. As you know, in Southern California, in San Diego, there is no one that is an MTH repair tech except for my repair tech, Ted Salvia. I've known Ted for most of my life, and he's a really great repairman and a DC up upgrader. So if you would like a model upgraded, he is probably one of the guys to go to. 
If you're looking for a repair tech that does really exceptional work, I highly recommend him and I will include his contact information in the description of this video. Ted also did the conversion for my cab forward. Now, if you're wondering if Ted's going to do another cold turbine, yes, he's only doing his personal cold turbine. This cold turbine, my cold turbine, was the first locomotive that he did that was a cold turbine. And he asked a bunch of people on the OGR forum, and a couple people said they only did one and they're never doing another one again. So, in order for you to get a cold turbine converted, you're going to have to find someone that's willing to do it. But there's not a lot of people that are willing to do it now because it's just this model requires a lot of work. I'll be including a photo of what Ted had to do in order to get the wires for the A unit and B unit compatibility to work. Before we get to running this locomotive, I just want to explain that there's a lot of similar things that this model has now that it's DCS operable. It has a rear coupler and a front operating coupler through the DCS system. It has three spoke units, one in the A, two in the B. Now, the one thing I do need to mention is that in Eric Siegel's review, the most front smoke unit on the B unit, that hatch lifts off. However, on this model, it does not, and it was not done on any model until the PS3 run because of just issues. There's a mesh screen, as you guys saw in Eric's review, that is very hard to fill up smoke. So what I usually do is I use one of the needle nose applicators that you have for oil, and it's filled up with smoke unit fluid, and I just put it in, and I try to get it around the area, and I just squirt it in. There is no hole that fits it, so it's kind of a downside, but eventually the smoke trickles in and it'll start smoking. Alrighty guys, this wraps up this little discussion piece. Enjoy the rest of this video as I'll be running it around for a few minutes. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.
landing pattern. I'll get one on my way down and make a quick cut.